as uh, yesterday, boys, it was announced that uh, Dennis Allen citing the um, Pete Carmichael's track record, the history that they have together, they do not feel that any major needs uh, moves need to be made to get this offense going that Carmichael will be able to figure out. And then maybe intimating that some, uh, that some changes underneath Carmichael would maybe happen, and, and, and perhaps they think that that could Right the ship, which led to one very funny tweet, and 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 I apologize that I can't source the tweet or stuff like I do normally. I accidentally left everything at home uh, this morning, so we're flying a bit blind today. Hey, you stole my computer. I know, I know. I apologize. I apologize. Um, How'd you forget everything at home? Uh, I don't backpack know. everything. I slept. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. I slept too good, which is great. Energy levels through the roof. Show prep and equipment, all-time low. Okay, so once <laughs> when we can line those up, we can line up the sleep and the equipment, we're going to be back to full strength here pretty soon. Feel great, though, and that's the main thing. Uh, but not because of the Saints news. But it did lead to a very funny tweet where uh, somebody's like, yeah, okay, Saints are going to uh, change the tight end coach and then think that that's going to fix this uh, this New Orleans Saints offense. I don't know, Jake. Um, I mean, we, 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 we've we we talked about it a lot. You look at the NFL, you look at the teams that are having the most success. Uh, there are some of the teams that are doing the most pre-snap movement, um, manipulating matchups, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have the Saints who ran the least amount of pre-snap movement in the NFL. They ran the least amount of play action. They try to run Alvin Kamara consistently through the tackles. It's kind of been a theme throughout the year that the offensive philosophy has been lacking. But it looks like the Saints, and we told you this. I told you. This is how the ownership group and power group views themselves, is um, they're going to be hesitant to make major changes. Uh, they, they kind of view themselves like the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? Where they're not going to be reactive and keep kind of chasing this drag and they're going to give guys a chance to figure it out. And uh, it looks like they landed on, uh, let's just run it back. Let's just run it back last next year. The, I think it, what, what, what kind of sucks is, Jake, uh, th- this team, well, I, I guess uh, they lose a lot of this credit with how they played in that last game, how putrid it was, losing to Carolina, absolutely pathetic. But I was going to say that this team finishing strong deserves to be applauded, but in the end, it may have led to what most people feared the most, which was it gave you just enough of a glimmer where they're like, nope, you know what? I think we're fine. I think we're fine. We, 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 we can figure this out. Can yeah. they? I, I, so when you look at the numbers, uh, they're 19th in points per game. Uh, I think they were, or sorry, 19th, I believe, in yards per game. I think they're 22nd in points per game. So it's not great, and it's not awful enough to be like, Hey, you got to you got to make the move. Like you, you got to press. Like you're 29th in offense, and so like it's right in that gray area of trying to make a move. For me, what I was disappointed in was the things that you mentioned. Like you're not being creative. Like the the no motion stuff. Like that you can't explain that to me to make sense. Not with the weapons that you have. Like you have weapons that feel like you could create a game plan that would be yeah. very confusing for all the defenses that you play. And then it's also utilizing the weapons that you have. Like, I didn't feel like they did a great job at all at doing that. Like, it's like there was no rhyme or reason. There was no flow. There was no chemistry to the offense. And so, like, I'm not going to look at 19th and yards and and think a whole lot. Because, for me, that's not even where my mind goes. It doesn't my tell mind, the story. My mind goes to the lack of creativity and having no purpose for, you know, things like, and we talk about a lot, like Taysom Hill. Like, it was like the games they did it. They won. And the games they didn't, they lost. And then sometimes they would do it a little bit. Sometimes they wouldn't do it at all. It's like you just you, you got to be consistent with what you're trying to do. And then there's the quarterback situation uh, between Jameis and Andy Dalton. And and I know you had an injury to Michael Thomas. but And then with the running game, I think the running game, and obviously we'll watch more Saints football than we do other teams. It was maybe the least creative running attack that I've seen. Yeah. In a day and age when – on the NFL meta, at least, things are shifting a bit, and creative running is starting – like it's kind of going back to be, old school a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it's starting to become the hallmark of – well, right, the same old school concepts, like we always talked about, wrap up in some yes. new ways to deliver power and deliver counter. But like, yeah, so you are going the opposite direction of what the most successful teams in the NFL seem to be doing. It's kind of the overall main point, I feel like. So you thought – I think a lot of us thought that they would make some moves because – what do we always talk about like when some someone's taken over uh, a new job or their head coach for the first time and they have a bad season? Man, we don't have a lot to fall back on. 
Yeah. Like if you're a fan, you can't fall back on remember the good times. Remember oh, or, yeah, or sure. remember what they did at that other place. We are Brent Venables. Yeah. I mean, because I, I know Pete Carmichael <laughs> called plays the year that Sean was suspended. But that was even like that. You felt like Sean still, like, cause yes, yeah, he Drew wasn't Reeves, there, Drew but Reeves, yeah, Drew Brees, and you were still, you're still part of it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And so, like the year he steps away, like we don't have anything to fall back on. And I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to say it. I actually thought it was going to work out well. I, I thought that being with Sean Payton for so long, it was the right move to make. I should say, and it was not what I thought it was going to be. I don't think it was what anyone thought it was going to be because lack of creativity is not what I would have had Pete Carmichael in. Uh, no, yeah, I, 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 I agree. It's surprising how it happened. Um, I guess Dan Rauscher has been let go, tight ends coach, run game coordinator, so that is uh, the only move that has happened thus far. But, look, hmm. run game coordinator, <laughs> a lot of times, is a title to give you more money. Yeah, that's okay. That Passing game coordinator is a title to give you more money. Oh, Assistant yeah. head coach is a title to give you more money, to justify giving you more money because maybe you thought they were a really good tight end coach. Now, are you involved in the game plan as far as what the, the, the running scheme looks like? Yeah, but you'd be that if you weren't the running game coordinator. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, at the end of the day, Pete Carmichael's looking at his sheet and he's not, like, yelling over, like, hey, like, what do we run here? And he gives the call for the – no, and they come up with a game plan together. Like he would have a say in the game plan, regardless if he had yeah. that the title. Game coordinator title. So like that yeah. to me is not going to do anything. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, we used to have offensive coordinators in San Diego. Nor was the offensive coordinator. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, they had the title, they made the money, but they literally had no effect on what Nor was going to call. When it comes to the Alabama DC being replaced, is Nick Saban still the defensive coordinator, or has he no. finally transcended? Yeah, he actually lets the DC run his stuff now, yep. right? Okay, yeah, and he's offering input. I figured at this point. Yeah, and even that input's probably, which again, like minimal we compared about, to what it used to be. Yeah, and like we always talk about, you can't really coordinate on the college level as much anymore. You still can in the NFL. Like you can still be a head coach coordinator in the NFL oh, yeah. because you don't have to deal with hurdle all that kind of stuff. Um, you don't have to go to the uh, touchdown club in the middle of the week. Here's what's been rattling around in my brain, and this way, yeah, exactly. Oh my god, I'd be so mad. I'd be like, I have so much crap to do, I know. and I gotta go do. I mean, and there's no disrespect because I love ribs, okay? But like, with everything I have to do, it would at the end of a long day, it would feel kind of like a lot to go to TJ Ribs for the fan <laughs> show at like 7 p.m. Like, just think about how us normal human uh. beings approach our schedules and work. And then think about uh, like the an random Wednesday, end of the day, middle of a game week. You got to go. Uh, you got to go to TJ Ribs. It's and uh, uh, you can say, well, they make a lot of money. They do. That is. No, we're just why. saying. And that's why you do it. Yeah, and you're competitive. Saying, like, it's not probably the best. Feeling. It's competitive, but everything in life is opportunity cost. And uh, yeah, that just that would that would ooh, be a lot. Um, <clears throat> okay, I think here's what I'm trying to say. It's been rattling around in my head. I think in terms of keeping Carmichael, like whether or not it's the right move, if you just focus on the football, I think there's some uh, discussion room there, right? Like like you said, Jake, it wasn't just flat out. Like we're not like Nathaniel Hackett, Russell Wilson. It's not Russell Wilson. Do you hear Russell Wilson reaching out to Sean Payton, uh, asking him to basically come fix him? Yes. Like Russell Wilson's a law, which would you feel for us there? That's a bad place to be when you feel like – that's a man who feels as if he has lost kind of all confidence in himself, which may be at odds with the public persona that Russell Wilson is putting out there, but how could he not be having a bit of a crisis of conscience, right? So it's not that bad of a disaster. I mean, you had Andy Dalton, and he put up some respectable numbers at time. And so from the pure football perspective, I accept there's some debate room. You can argue, and there's some wiggle room about whether or not um, the staff should stay the same. From the PR standpoint, which you could say doesn't matter as much, but from the fan standpoint, this is just an abject failure. Um, after a year that was so listless, so disappointing in so many big moments when you had to have it, uh, even, even going the extra mile, again, to lose that last game where you were really working towards, if you'd gone 8-9, and nine, you were working towards having some actual like good feeling heading into the offseason, 
you were uh, you were working towards uh, ending on a very positive note. The four in a row. So it seems so ridiculous. You're the Carolina Panthers standing there. That's fine. They suck. They got nobody. You go and you lose ten to seven at home after scoring on the opening drive of the game easily. Like it just felt pathetic. And like much of this year, Jake, it was like okay, you did a lot of good things, but then you did a couple huge bad things that kind of ruined the day. And so, from a pure PR standpoint, when that much bad will is generated and that much anger is generated, the people demand blood. The people demand heads will roll. The people demand change to give hope so you don't feel like you're just going to be watching Dalton and Allen and Carmichael again next year. And uh, the Saints said, well, we don't see it the same way, which honestly is not the worst thing from an ownership or leadership group, right? To maybe not be beholden to the to the, to the insane mob who, who is out there marching the streets calling for heads to roll. But at the same time, even from a pure football perspective, nobody would have batted an eye or said they were in the wrong if they had chosen to make one of these moves. So it's, it's a bad situation. It's going to win the Saints, no fans. So I guess what I'm saying is it's not an outright awful move, uh, well, but it's going to feel awful. And it's, 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 it's already setting the tone for people to be angry throughout the entirety of the offseason. Anytime you have a bad year, like someone has to fall in the fans' eyes. Mm-hmm. Right, wrong, or indifferent. That's always how it is. <laughs> the gods demand blood. It, and <laughs> so when you come back and you're basically going to be the same staff, that's why you're going to have fans upset. And my last point on the offense, it's not even that it was bad. My problem was it was safe. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it never got out of a territory where they were trying to be safe. It never tried to be, you know, a little reckless, which is okay, right? You you can be reckless and still have a plan. Like, I think the 49ers offense is reckless. Like, there's a lot going on. Yeah. There, there's a lot of things that could go wrong, but they know exactly what they're doing, and they live and organize chaos, if you will. And I, so I enjoy watching it. When I watch the All-22 of the Saints, it's not that it's bad. It's just safe. It's a little boring. And that kind of defines everything. And it defines the entire philosophy, right? I mean, that's the problem here. All of this is safe. And keeping Dennis Allen to try to chase the Sean Payton dream was safe. Keeping Pete Carmichael, Pete Carmichael, this offseason. Like, and and that's where you you gotta start to wonder, are the Saints chasing a golden era that cannot be recaptured? Right? Like, 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 like a man. Um, trying to hold on to water as, as it leaks through his hands or sand. Like, there's Peyton and Breeze or Peyton and Breeze. They are still trying to hold on to that identity, and I understand why. It's the only truly um, mega successful uh, period of time in the franchise's history. It's the golden era. They're chasing a golden era, except, like, it, it, it's kind of like after the Romans pulled out of England, right? And, like, a generation later, Jake, you have all these, you know, these, these, Britain barbarians and they're like seeing these like Roman statues and builds are like who built these like gods must have built these I don't I don't understand this at all like that's the saints at this point the internet has been pulled and they're trying to figure out how to recapture the glory of ages past but they don't have the architects they don't have the knowledge they don't have the people that did it before so instead what what you know a lot of people would argue they need to do is do something new except that that era has ended and tried to move fully forward into a new one and that is not happening and maybe i end up being proven wrong maybe an architect comes along and they figure out how the buildings work i don't know but it doesn't feel good where we stand right now the one thing if you're a saints fan that you can you can hope on is your first round left tackle really didn't play because of injury and i know he's going through an injury right now but i expect him to be ready for training camp um the michael thomas situation might get resolved and so you can kind of move on. You can push that to the yeah, side. Yeah, he's cut. That's moving on. Right? Like you're so finally done with that. That is you, true. You're done with it. You're not you know, wondering when's he coming back. Um, you know, Jarvis went through injury, so that was one of the receivers you were counting on. A, a, lot, a lot of guys, obviously, went, went through injuries yeah, there. Yeah, they injured years, you which, gotta, which also did them no favors. And you got a, another year, Chris Olave. He's going to be your true number one. And you could sit there and you can make a case for a lot of the things that went wrong for the Saints, but it's got to be better. It's got to be more creative. It has to be an offense that makes a defense work and not just line up. Like, yeah. if you just think about it, like, with the no motion stuff, like, if I just line up and it's base. So easy to identify. Very easy to identify. I mean, hey, so chill. Mike 57, wherever, you're going here, I'm going here, let's go. You know, it's easy. Anybody can Love do it. that, you know. 
love it. That's base. Yeah. Base is base. <laughs> you can't play base against the 49ers. You can't play base against the Eagles, right? You can't play base against these teams that are still a Kansas City. You can't do it. Yeah. And so that for me, if you're a Saints fan, you, you have to hope they stay healthy. You got to go make a couple of moves and you have to change your thought process when you're putting your game plan together. Because, I mean, look, Pete knows football. Like, I'm not sitting here saying, like, he does know. Uh, he's been Obviously, around. I've said it plenty of times on air. Like, he'll, he'll forget more football than I'll ever know. But that doesn't stop, you know, it doesn't stop us from no. being able to objectively. Because you can't turn it on and say that that's a creative offense. Yeah, and, and, and just look at the numbers. The numbers, like. They're hum-ho, like right in the middle. They're, like, they're, hum they're, they're, they're technically right below average. Like, that's not where you want your, in any business, that's not where you want right. your employees to be. Now, sometimes through context of the situation, you have to accept that that's where you are and that's where they're going to be. But like, you, like, okay, he can know infinitely more football than I do, and that's fine. But those num but that's not helping him be in the upper half of the league, which is where you have to be. So it's yeah, it's um, he knows a lot of football. They have to use that knowledge better. Bottom line, uh, and, and he's getting opportunity. And he's getting opportunity. So now, if you're Carmichael and everybody, I mean, this is it. You know, like. You gotta start engaging in risk, like Jake is talking about. Safe, you're, they, you, I mean, that is the perfect word. It describes the front office decision making. It describes um, the offensive philosophy. Uh, I mean, it even describes kind of how the quarterback battle ended up going down. Where it was the relative safety and consistency of Andy Dalton that ended up pushing him uh, to the four versus the wild. Uh, ness of Jameis Winston, which admittedly the, the, the wild nature of Jameis Winston at odds philosophically with the offense that they obviously wanted to run. Um, so we'll see what uh, what ends up what ends up happening. Um, what do you think? In the comments, youtube.com slash 104.5 ESPN. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the Off the Bench and OTV Overtime channels. This will be on the Overtime channel. It's where we do all of our Saints and Pelicans and Off the Bench is where all the LSU Content goes. Uh, let's have ourselves a Friday, folks. Stick around right here on OTV.